Hey guys, Mars Engen here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. And so, I did the top 10 units on Global for the end of 2022 video earlier. And I thought this would be a good counterpart video to do. Um, I'm getting this up. Funnily enough, when this video actually goes up, it's going to be midnight my time in the UK. So, this will essentially be both a combination of the last video of 2022 and technically the first video of 2023. But I wanted to get this out today because it felt a little bit more um, appropriate than putting it out like tomorrow once we're properly into the 1st of January 2023. I thought this kind of video would be a bit, little bit less... Um, I don't know, appropriate? I don't know, whatever. So we did the top 10 units uh, on Global for 2022. This is going to be, as you already know from the title and the thumbnail, the top five disappointing releases of 2022. So I tried to keep this to Dokkan Fest exclusives or like, you know, big main units. Because um, we could talk about side banner units like the STR Goten and Trunks from the Majin Vegeta banner, the STR Broly from the Anniversary banner. There's probably another couple of units like here and there as well. But I tried to keep this more to like Dokkan Fest exclusives, LRs, that kind of thing. Um, and so yeah, the top five most disappointing releases. Um, I tried to, obviously this is my opinion, just like any tier list. Um, in terms of not being biased... I did include some units that it almost pains me to do so. So we're just going to jump in straight away to number five, which is a joint fifth place with the Limit Breaker Super Saiyan 4s. Now, obviously, it pains me to say this. I'm still hashtag Heroes Agenda until I die. But even though I do like these units and I think they are better than a lot of people give them credit for, I think it would be impossible to make a video about disappointing releases without mentioning these guys. Because as much as I do like them, and I've beaten every event in the game with them, I think they are good, but they certainly, even to me, they could have been better. So one of the things about Goku specifically is restricting him to uh, full power or Dragon Ball Heroes allies in order to get his damage reduction. Um, and it has to be both, right? If you have one full power and one Heroes ally, it doesn't work, which I think is very weird. Um, and also the design of the two units together. So this Goku, he's very, very good. But when you look at his kit and you look at his kit next to Vegeta, you assume like you want to run these two together as a rotation. And out of the two, Goku is the slot one unit because he has damage reduction. But the problem is in the more difficult content in the game, he's not really good enough to be the slot one unit. Even when you've uh, taken enough hits and he has his full passive active, um, he's still going to die to like red zone boss super attacks in slot one. So I think that's a big problem with his design is he's not a slot one unit. But when you look at his kit compared to Vegeta, they obviously want you to run the units together. And out of the two, Goku is the slot one unit. He's just not really good enough to be a slot one unit. And considering they released at the end of the year, like two months before the JP anniversary, I don't know if we're going to get as much of a power creep as we got over this last year. But you could obviously argue that these guys are going to age out a little bit quicker. I think a lot of people's big disappointment with them is their stats are quite low compared to um, some of the other units that have released during the year. I think this is largely down to something we talked about on, uh, I talked about on Twitter before. Um, the fact that Vegito and Broly, Super Saiyan 4, are going to EZA next year. And their EZA is going to basically give them like LR stats because their base stats were so high. So it almost feels like they've deliberately lowered the stats of these units. Because we know that in like two to three years they're going to get an EZA. But the problem is in two to three years time we're going to have had even more power creep. So a unit getting an EZA to have like 2022 level LR stats is potentially not going to be good enough. So it does feel like they made some weird choices with these units that I personally would not have made. Obviously, people were hoping that the release of more Super Saiyan 4 units would be buffs to the LR Super Saiyan 4s, and they weren't really. So as much as I like these units, they were a little bit disappointing to me, and I know they were largely disappointing to a lot of the community, which is unfortunate because you guys know I'm a big Heroes fan. I'm going to keep pushing that Heroes agenda. You know, when we get all the final Red Zone stages come out for this Red Ribbon Army set, I'm going to do a video beating them all with the Heroes team because I'm going to keep pushing that agenda, but... 
I think it would just show my bias a little bit too much if I didn't mention them in this video because even for me they're not as good as I wish they could have been so technically that means they are a disappointment so moving on to slot four we have the resurrection of f blues super saiyan god super saiyan goku and vegeta i again actually do like this unit i feel like they are a little bit underrated but the biggest problem is like they didn't really make a huge overall impact on the meta and when you look at the top tier dokon fest exclusive releases of the year they don't really match up to a lot of those other units so like if we take goku into example for the first couple of turns especially if you get his additional attacks early on his stats can be pretty good but his defense is certainly not anything crazy. And then once we exchange into Vegeta, for the first couple of turns with the orb changing, he can definitely look very good. But once that runs out, he can certainly get caught by some of these harder bosses. Um, I feel like his orb changing should have just been permanent. Um, and we could have even gotten some extra buffs in here like his defense can be very good after a super even after a double super but they are a unit that are just raw stats so once you've exchanged into Vegeta even getting a double super he's going to take a lot of damage from some of the big red zone bosses and of course the links are a bit of an issue because the resurrection of F units they give them these links like resurrection of F which is not shared by a huge amount of units also for global it's kind of an L we didn't get the easy A's for the other blue Vegetas that would have really helped out these guys team when they came out um, so overall I would say these guys are a fairly big disappointment even just the fact that they are a decent unit but people have been waiting for a unit to properly represent this like moment from resurrection of f or at least this last part of resurrection of f for a while and i feel like the unit we got didn't match up to the expectations that a lot of people had therefore making this unit quite a disappointment so moving on to slot three we have the agl lr super saiyan goku and vegeta i know there are people out there that do really like this unit for me i think they are the most underwhelming dokon fest lr released this year apart from maybe the number one slot which probably gives it away but let's be honest i'm sure we all guessed who number one is going to be right now this unit i personally do not like them in my experience of using them i just find them disappointing all the time um once they get their morale boost they certainly are a much much better unit but with how crazy good carnival goku cooler and even metal cooler were from the same celebration this what they are after their morale boost they should have just been this straight from the beginning and then I think they would have been in a much better position. Because getting uh, three super attacks and being hit seven times when a unit is, especially for the most difficult content, not really good enough to be in slot one against the harder enemies. This can be incredibly difficult to actually get. And I have had runs where I've put this unit on the team for, you know, whether it's like powerful comeback, movie heroes. Um, and they are the unit that lets me down um, in the run. In, um, in fact, I made a full power team video with the Limit Breaker Super Saiyan 4 Goku making a full power build. And I ended up taking these guys off of that build for the video because the first two attempts that I did at beating an event, they were the unit that got me killed, not even Limit Breaker Super Saiyan 4 Goku. So overall, I just find this unit very disappointing. Even if you like them, like I said, I think comparing them to the other three LRs that we got during the worldwide download celebration, these guys just feel incredibly underwhelming. So be interesting to see, uh, like on the movie heroes team, they just don't really have a place because of how good that team is now. Um, they just, I feel like, where do you use this guy, right? Like they're a joined forces lead, which is okay, I guess, but just overall a very underwhelming unit, which I think is very unfortunate. So moving on to number two, the second most disappointing unit of the year has got to be Raditz. Like all memes aside, this unit is bad and it sucks because I like Raditz enough. You know, he wasn't in it very much. So, you know, there's only so much you can like a character that's not really in the show a huge amount. But Raditz absolutely deserved a good Dokkan Fest exclusive. He should have got a unit that was on the same level as Ginyu, where when he came out, he was in discussion for being like the best TUR in the game. And instead, he came out and immediately was being referred to as like the worst Dokkan Fest exclusive released, not only this year, but like people were comparing him to 2021 Dokkan Fest exclusives that were better than him. 
So overall a huge fumble. The only thing that's good about this unit is his leader skill because he's a pure Saiyan's lead. Like people will say things like, oh, but Raditz's team can beat every event in the game. It's like, well, yeah, because it's a pure Saiyan's team and you just hide Raditz. Like it's not actually Raditz doing any of the work. Um, and he just is a very, very disappointing unit. I feel like they could have made very small changes to make him really good. It just seems so crazy that he came out after units like Ginyu, after the anniversary, and he's just really, really underwhelming, which is very disappointing. Like I say, I think he should have had a good unit. I like his animations. His active skill is cool. Why does he not have a scouter? He's the character that introduced scouters into the show. Like... That wouldn't make him suddenly good just adding a scouter effect, but it would certainly be a huge help, and it seems very weird that he doesn't have it. Um, they made him an AoE unit, which seems weird. I know he fought Goku and Piccolo at the same time, but making him an AoE unit and thereby making his offense power very, very weak, whilst at the same time, like, if he was an AoE unit that doesn't really hit very high attack stats without, obviously, this extra part of his passive where the enemy's on low HP, he should have just been hitting as hard as he hits when the enemy's on low HP all the time. And even then, he still wouldn't be amazing, but that would be a big help. But if he's going to be hitting so weakly, if they wanted to make him an AoE, why is he not, like, a defensive god? Because his defense isn't really that great either. So as someone who would really have liked to have seen a really good Raditz, this unit is definitely a huge disappointment. He would have been the number one slot if it wasn't for, that's right, you guessed it, Ultimate Gohan. Like, brackets, Beast Gohan. Because, you know, he isn't really. Now, a huge amount of the disappointment of this unit comes from the fact that Beast Gohan isn't playable, which as much as I understand that disappointment, you have to remember that a lot of people, they created that expectation themselves that he was going to be a transforming unit and we would actually get to play with Beast Gohan. Now, don't get me wrong, that's what they should have done. That would have been the most hype way to do it, but they didn't do that for some reason. So, assumingly, we're going to get standalone uh, Beast Gohans and Orange Piccolos in the future, but... First of all, that in and of itself was a massive disappointment. Now, for me personally, I can get over that. I talked about it in the top 10 list, but if he's only going to be Beast Gohan as the active skill, I feel like it should have been the most powerful active skill in the game. And it's not really that powerful. Like, you can get it very early, but if you fire it off before he's built up fully, it's not going to be very powerful. And even when he is fully built up, it's honestly not that great. So... I would have much preferred it be harder to get and be the absolute like hardest hitting active skill in the game. Um, it absolutely should have been based on, you know, it, he one shot Cell Max with it. So it should have been an absolute megaton bomb, but it's really not. And then, of course, the other huge issue is his links are absolutely terrible. Um, how you can make a unit that requires 20 key to get a chance to additional and then 24 key to be effective against all types, but then the unit can struggle to even get their 18 key super, is just such a huge flaw in his design. Um, and remember, the gods, I've mentioned this already multiple times now, even in the tier list video, but the LR gods and the LR Super Saiyan 4s came out almost a full year before this guy, and when they get 20 key, they get a guaranteed additional super, whereas he only gets a 70% chance. So every time you actually do manage to get 20 key and then he just does an additional normal, it's such a huge disappointment. So very, very bad, um, very upsetting, but... Yeah, his links are bad, makes it hard to get key. He doesn't have great link partners. Like, he's a hybrid's 200% lead. That's something that hybrid fans have been waiting for for a huge, like, a very long time. But he doesn't even link up super well with all the units on that team that you'd want to run with him. So, overall, as much as this unit is still good, like, I had him in my top 10 list, but as good as he is, he just should have been way better. Like, when he looks good, he looks really good. When he looks bad, he just looks really bad. And for something that is probably, you know, let's be honest, whether you like the superhero movie or not, whether you like the Beast Gohan form or not, this is probably one of the most hype, like, the new things, the new content that has come to the Dragon Ball IP. Remember how insanely, like, excited everybody was with Blue Gogeta, the revamp of Broly? Like, this guy was on that level of hype. 
and his debut in Dokkan. Like, I'm not saying that just because he's the most hyped character and, you know, technically he's the most powerful character in the movie and all that stuff. None of that means that they had to make him the best unit in the game. But the way that he ended up being as good as he can be he's just a huge disappointment so i really don't think anyone would disagree even though i know people out there do like this unit like the more i get to use him like i said at his peak he is really good but even the people that have seen how good he can be i feel like most people would have to agree that he is probably the most disappointing release of 2022 which is very unfortunate considering how hype everybody was for him to come to the game so let me know what you guys think down below are there any units that i missed out that you were super disappointed in this year let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section and hopefully we don't get too many disappointing units in 2023 so that is going to be it for the video guys this has been the mask ningen smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new check out the links down below for the discord and the merch store and i will see you all again soon have a good one